have two five-minute demos in this particular video, um, both five-minute drawings. I went a little over five minutes on each one of them, but that's usually what I do in class, too. I'll spend a couple extra moments right afterwards shading things in or cleaning up an edge or what have you. In this first drawing, I'm going to show you the use of the five-minute duration of time and actually blocking in anatomy. So I'm starting with the same the pillow shape in the torso, the action line for the arms, the character line for the arms so that I could determine their volumes, the center line down the middle of the body, any indications that would help me find the rib cage from the pelvis, especially in this instance because I'm going to be doing an anatomical study, it really makes sense to get those spaces blocked out. So I'm using a part of what would be the abstraction here, going from the shoulders down to the base of the pelvis, um, locating the pelvis now, and the oblique breakup, so that takes the pillow shape from its really basic construction and it turns it into something a little more dynamic. Once I have the cylinders in place for the legs and the arms, then I'll go ahead and place the muscle construction over the top of that. Here I'm working out the other side of the torso, how everything lines up and cascades downward. The transition line across the back to find where the scapulas go. And then I'm playing up a lot of the shadow pattern rhythms that are in the photograph. I'm putting those into the picture, giving them some kind of a volume. That way I understand that they're not just linear divisions, but they're actual plane surfaces back in there and then I'm starting to locate the muscle rhythms that come off of that. So this particular quick sketch is about musculature. Um, it's about finding the anatomy. I'm also showing a slightly different approach here in the shading and I'm using these little hatch lines. And the hatch lines that I'm putting across the back, I'm trying to draw them across the torso to help reinforce the cross contour getting them all to curve a little bit so that they feel like they're going over muscles, they feel like they're going over bones, and that they all complement each other and move in the exact same direction, which is around, around the figure. So the shadow patterns that I put in there early on um, are indications of smaller planes, and then within each of those smaller planes I'm putting the hatch lines. The hatch lines are the plane and they are the direction that the plane is traveling in in reference to the other lines and the other planes that have also been drawn into the back. So the first set of lines indicates or dictates how all the other lines are going to coordinate with them. And the first few that I put on were across the back at a slight angle which indicated the scapula and then all the other lines that I'm drawing across the back are also indicating that. When I start to block in where the muscles go, I'll also put a cross contour over where the muscles are um, in their generic state like I'm doing now. These have no reference to shadow patterns or half tones. They are just reference to how the muscle is turning in space in reference to the rest of the body. So these cross contours are very critical because they're the only lines that you can really draw over the form that help you see the form. All of the lines that go along with the form sometimes don't give us a sense of volume unless the ends of those lines somehow cross over themselves and show some kind of direction. Otherwise those are length lines. Length lines show us the boundaries. It's the shorter lines, the cross contours, that help us understand the volumes between those boundaries. So over here now I'm putting the trapezius and the deltoid on um, over the top of the generic markings that I have for the scapula, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the teres major, putting all of those in. I'm using the cross contour lines to go down the form so that I can see the undulating lines of each of those muscles as they stretch out towards the arm. And then across the back here we're look I'm looking for the obliques, that's the fold line and the skin. All of these markings are on a shadowy side of the figure. That's why I decided to go ahead and use this particular drawing as an anatomy study because most of it is in shade, which means that everything would be blocked out black or dark. And in this case, I really don't want to do that. Um, I'd like to use this time to study some anatomy. And so this particular five minute pose, the gesture was solved. And now I'm just focusing on one particular part of the body that 
I feel like I need some work with, um, and that would be the back muscles here in this case. Um, and if I have any extra time left over, if I've already solved the riddle of what's going on in that particular space, then I'm going to move beyond that and try and solve any other places that I can as well. In this case, I'm starting to move out towards the thigh, in the leg, bicep femoris, gracilis, semimembranosus, and tendinosus in the two columns of the back of the leg. Um, and then again, cross contour lines so that I can read the up and over on the pose. This pose, I'm going to go a little bit further now, <clears throat> and I'm not going to just solve the anatomy, but I'm also going to solve the shadow patterns based upon the anatomy. So it won't have the same delineations that I had in the previous drawing. It'll have the same starting point, which is the simple scaffold, the character line, and the action line for the arms. And in this case, the legs are not visible, so we're not really putting a lot of emphasis on those particular aspects of the legs. Um, again, with my drawings, I tend to start with the torso and then work out to the arms and legs and then put the head on towards the end, especially in a pose that's either towards the back or compressed. Because in both instances, I think it's really important to ground the torso first, get the action started, and then put the details around it that are going to either stiffen it up or throw off the actual angles of the pose because we don't necessarily see them as much as we see details. So I'm really forcing myself to think about the uh, nuances that make this pose what it is throughout the torso first before I start really getting into it. And also, again, everything is very generic, very simple. I'm not over-exaggerating the musculature in the beginning. I'm only going with simple rhythms and simple shapes to help me delineate what the pose is trying to be in its action. And then I'll put the shadow patterns on over the top. And hopefully those shadow patterns will work in reference with the rhythm lines that I've already designed and discovered in the pose. So here I am blocking out the shadow patterns using the broad side of the pencil, kind of giving myself a rough location for where each set of muscles will be placed or how each rhythm set will be worked out later on. And I'm trying to indicate them in their proper sharp or soft delineation. So that means I'm either going to use the side of the pencil to soften down those edges or I'll use the pencil tip to sharpen things up like I'm doing with the contours of the pose. And these particular five minute poses that I'm doing, they've all been related to figure construction. And because they're dealing with figure construction, because they're dealing with how to build a figure, I'm not as concerned with the render as much as I am concerned with just a graphic delineation knowing where dark and light exists. And if the darks are dark enough, I have enough range for me to push more half tones in between the darks and the lights. And that should bring on a sense of fullness throughout the figure from both the lit side to the shaded side. Now unfortunately again because I'm using a photo reference <coughs> the pose is not that well lit so I have to push the shadow patterns a little bit further. Also this model is dual lit which means that there are two light sources on her one to the left and one to the right and that can always cause problems and it'll definitely slow down a picture especially if we're in quick sketch mode which really it doesn't make any sense to me when I see some of these schools that light the model from 15 different angles um, and then call that figure drawing um, you're really slimming the chance of anybody being able to find any information in the figure because you've taken all of the light sources and completely obscured them or obscured the figure with too many lights and what we're really looking for in drawing is one powerful light source that exudes nice solid shadow patterns you can see half tone coming off of it and all of that is clearly visible to the eye we can see which is which truly because that one light source does not <coughs> allow for anything else to happen that would obscure the model when you turn on more and more lights that's when things really go become problematic one <coughs> the other light sources open up the shadows and not make them dark enough anymore so they don't seem like shadows or two it makes half tones and shadows feel exactly the same and then we have a really difficult time uh, differentiating one from the other and when you're doing your drawings it really does help again to have a solid light source one light source on your model um, and all the other light sources turned off so that you don't have any obscurities within those particular spaces so I'm using the broad side of the pencil for the shading. I'm using the pencil tip to sharpen things. Where values get darker, 
I'll accent that edge, whether it's a contour or it's an interior of a shadow. I'll accent it with the pencil first so I darken it down and then build a gradation directly off of it immediately so that I don't forget my goal there. Um, if something is sharp, I need to make it look that way. If something is soft, I need to get it to soft as fast as possible. Um, and that's so I, when I'm drawing through the picture, I don't confuse myself with what is what. And it's also because it's a quick sketch. Now, if it's a longer drawing, I'm not going to be as um, I'm not going to be as critical about getting those markings in the way that I am, and in fact, I won't be so heavy-handed. The heavy-handedness is a result of uh, drawing fast and drawing to a time duration, trying to solve everything quickly, and not getting too caught up in the sensitivity of the line, but actually drawing something out that feels nice, secure, and firm once I put it down on the page. That's going to help me with a quick sketch. It's going to help me see my picture and understand what I drew into it. And it becomes a useful reference for myself for later on if I don't have the model there.